Hi Chroma, you've been missing you all recently. Very lonely here with this fence, but welcome to All In Online. Today we have got some worship, we've got the word, but we're gonna kick off initially with the worship. So why don't you find a space that you feel comfortable, chill out in your room, on your bed, on a chair, but I'm just gonna pray us in before we start. So Lord, I just pray that you will fall in the rooms of all these people, God, that you will touch everyone with your spirit, Lord, that you will speak to people who need to be spoken to and comfort people who need to be comforted, Lord. And I just pray for your presence to fall, God. So yeah, amen. Worship it is. the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dust Sing praise the Father. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings to reveal to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Oh. And praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And that morning that you rose, all of heaven held his breath, till that stone was moved for good. For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of those who'd come To the Father are restored And the church, and the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel and shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me We're singing praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise forever to the King 
of kings Amen So we're going to be heading into the talk now Grab your Bible, grab your notebook, grab a pen Here it's going to talk to us about something I don't know what, let's find out and listen together Cool guys, I hope you are ready wherever you're watching from, whether it is Friday night and you're watching it live or you're catching up, it is good to have you here. And we're gonna be jumping straight into the word this evening. So I want you to grab your Bibles and jump to 1 Samuel 17. We're gonna be reading about the story of David and Goliath. Now, this is actually my favorite story ever in the Bible. I just love it. And I think I've always loved it since I was little, but there's parts of this story which really stand out to me. And this evening, what we're going to be looking at is obedience and what it means to fully listen to God, fully be obedient to the small tasks in order to be obedient in the big things that God asks. How does God train us in our field? How does God train us where we're at so we're ready for everything God has for us? So we're going to jump in at 1 Samuel 17 verse 4 and then I'm going to tell you in a bit where we jump into because it's quite a long chapter and I would love you guys to read this at home but we're just going to jump into a couple of bits to get the meat of the story. So we're going to go into 1 Samuel 17 verse 4 and it says this, a champion named Goliath who was from Gath came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits in span which means he was really 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 tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armour of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and his iron point, point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went, from head, uh, went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out of line up for battle? I am not a Philistine, are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I ever come and kill him, I will become your, you will become our subjects and will serve us. So Goliath is here against the Israelites. He is here ready to fight. He is huge. I remember reading that he was 11 foot tall. Now that is 11 subways, which if you stood 11 subways on top of each other, like that is tall in itself, but it's quite thin. But if you added the weight and added the width of Goliath and then added his armor and added everything he had on him, he would be threatening. Like he isn't here like a nice guy, like, yeah, come and get me. He's, he's ready to kill. He's ready to go. And he says to the Israelites, who here is willing to fight me? Who here is willing to kill me? We jump forward into verse 16. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward and every morning and evening he took his stand. For 40 days, no Israelite said, I'm going to fight you. No Israelite had the guts to come and like, no, do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defeat this Goliath. They stood silent. They waited in their camp. Now, if you head a few villages back, there's Jesse and his son, David. So David was a shepherd boy and it says this. Jesse said to his son, David, take this bread and 10 loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along this cheese, the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. So David's dad says, oh, I've got, I've got a packed lunch for you to take to your brothers. Are you okay to take it? Like, can you go do that? David in that moment, like I have older brothers and if I'd have been asked to go and do this and my brothers were out being the best, they were in the army and I was left at home. Like if they were doing something that seemed really exciting, the last thing I would want to do would take them a packed lunch. If my dad asked me to do that, I'd be like, seriously? Like they're already doing all the fun and now you want me to wait on them hand and foot? But David does it. He's obedient to what he's asked to do. He does the small job. And then we all know the story. We jump forward into verse 45. So David's got to the campsite. He's seen what's happening. He's seen that the Israelites are refusing to fight Goliath. And he's like, I think I can do this. I've been fighting bears. I've been fighting sheep. This Goliath has nothing on me. For I know that I fight with my God. I know he's there with me. So if we jump into verse 45, it says this. David said to the Philistine, you come against with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel in whom you have defeated. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands 
and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the caress of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know there is a God in Israel. And those who gathered here will know that it is not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you all of it into his hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him, reaching into his bag and taking out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down into the ground. In that moment, Goliath was defeated. Now, often when we tell this story, we just look at this moment. We look at the amazing moment when little shepherd boy David gets his sling out and kills Goliath in front of everyone. He's hailed a hero. But we can't look at this story without thinking of everything David did up to this point. Now, David was obedient to what God and his father had asked him to do. Are you willing to be obedient in the small things that God's asking you? You might have dreams of, of going to different nations. You might have dreams of, of writing worship songs. You might have dreams of, of preaching to loads of people. But when God says to you, can you reach out to your friend and pray for them? They said they, they're sick or they, they have an issue. I want you to pray for them. Are you willing to do that small moment of faith and obedience for God? Because these areas, when we step out in the, in the smaller circle, circles, in the smaller circumstances, is our training ground. It's our places where we get to practice all God has for us. The same way that David had killed lions, he'd killed bears, he'd killed sheep, which if I'm honest, seem quite big to me. I would not want to kill a lion or whatever. But when he came to Goliath, that was nothing. Are you willing to be obedient in the small things so that God can use you for the big things? And also the way he takes the little, the little sandwiches to his brothers. He humbles himself because he's like, do you know what? I'm here to serve. My first act is serving. And that is what we're called to do. We're called to serve. And yes, we want to do all the things God has asked us to do. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. We speak about this over and over again. But he's asking, are you willing to serve him? Are you willing to do the things he asks you? Now, sometimes we get a bit confused because you're like, but God wants me to have life and life to the full. It says that in the Bible, but sometimes we don't see that in our life. So I feel like God's saying, don't do that right now. Wait a little while or you're not ready. I want to train you in this area first. I want you to tell your friends about Jesus before I put you in front of a thousand people. When actually you might be like, but I want to be there already. But God's teaching us discipline. God is protecting us from things. He's leading us into things he has for us. I was reminded of something my dad used to do when I was younger and I used to hate it. So whenever I was younger, I wasn't allowed to watch anything which had any sort of magic in. And this was the most embarrassing thing because my friends would all be talking about programs that they'd watch and I'd be like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Uh, yeah, this is really awkward. And then they'd all laugh at me and I'd be the odd one out. But my dad was looking out for me. He's like, I don't want your mind to be full of things like that. I'd rather you were watching these really cringy Christian things, which to me at the time, I was like, oh, this is so weird and cringy and none of my friends are watching it. But this set my foundation of the understanding the Bible. This set my foundation of understanding who Jesus was. I wasn't filling my mind with the things of the world. And actually, as I grew up, I'm so thankful that my dad did this, that he was so strict on it and that I looked different to my friends. Sometimes we don't understand what God is doing in the moment. We're like, God, I don't get it that I'm not doing what they're doing. Oh God, why are you making me look different? But it's because he's preparing you for stuff. He's preparing you for more. He's preparing you for your Goliath. So this week, I want to challenge you. I want you to ask God what he wants you to be obedient in, in the small things. And as you do that, ask him to impart his big dreams on you. Ask him, God, where do you want me to be? What do you want me to see and what do you want me to do? But as you pray that, don't just pray into that. Say, God, I'm willing to do the steps that get me there. I'm willing to serve you whatever it takes. I'm willing to give everything for you. That is my challenge for you this week, Crummy Youth. And I'm going to pray for you before we head out this evening. So where you're at, get ready to pray, whatever that means, whether that's looking away from the screen or just shutting your eyes or whatever, we're going to pray because this moment is for you and God. So Heavenly Father, we thank you that 
that you are the God that wins battles. You are the same God that defeated Goliath. And we thank you that you used people like David throughout the Bible, small shepherd boys, to do your work. And God, we want to partner with you in this. We want to partner with what you have for our lives. And Lord, we pray that you would show us where to be obedient. What are the things you want us to do to serve you? What in our life can we do to, be, to begin to move towards the journey of where you've got for us? And Lord, teach us how to listen to, to your word and your voice above everything of the world. Because we want to stand out for you, God. Amen. So that was all in. Pretty amazing, right? I know I enjoyed it. Hope you did. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the evening. Make sure to check us out on the gram and 10.30 uh, on Sunday. Tune in for our live streamed church.